Now, with, with that being said, just a little bit deeper because we had a con- uh, we had a conversation yesterday with mm-hmm. a uh, you know an individual in the industry that you know has a nice nice amount of clout in what he does, very very reputable and respectable, and he brought up they were asking us about tiktok some questions around tiktok because we dropped this really dope report for y'all who don't know we did a tiktok global report for 2022 had the industry talking about it you know posted in many respectable publications y'all should check that out maybe we'll drop a link below here you know what i'm saying we'll do that um so they were asking us some questions right now one thing that he said that a lot of managers were complaining to him about was it being hard to make a hit on TikTok, mm-hmm. right? There was this moment of time where they just felt like it was making some hits, but they feel like that moment is past. Yeah. All right. I'll let you get started on that. I got hella thoughts on it. Obviously, we had the conversation already, but like, well, share some of those thoughts that you shared in the convo. Yeah, man. So I think the the conversation started because we were talking about the artist generated content. And, and so for those who haven't seen the report yet, we, we have this term that we use called AGC, which AGC stands for Artist Generated Content. It's our much. term. You see that anywhere, that's our term, people. <laughs> let Just let it be known. Yeah, so, so AGC is basically content that the artist makes and put out on their own platform. Um, similar to UGC, which is user generated content, which is content that people outside of the artist make put on their platform, right? So the conversation was sending around how our report found that most of the most recent TikTok hits their spark was kind of driven by AGC, the, the artist generated content, rather than um, what was more traditional was influencer campaigns. And so I think that we, we're in a, a really unique position where we might be one of a handful of people in the music industry who really, who's like, who've been working TikTok in every version of it, you know what I'm saying? Other than when it was musically, but we, we, weren't, we came pretty close after they switched to TikTok. You know right, 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 right. That's, that's ads, influencers. Yeah content advising manipulation and media yeah all of it all of it bro of every it. single aspect so so it's like when we uh when we were listening to the guy speak i'm thinking like okay this must be coming from managers who maybe are familiar with like 2019 2020 tiktok because i don't know if you remember that tiktok but that tiktok was pretty easy to get viral we was getting like a viral campaign like like every other week you know what i'm saying that was all off of influencers at first too yeah yeah exactly so Cheap. Just, just money being spent taking advantage of the platform, how cheap the attention was, um, and then just blasting it out a lot. The platform was much more simpler back then. You could get a fucking 10 million stream song off a good dance trend, right? You fast forward to 2022, the platform is more mature. You know what I'm saying? Like the creators are talking about a more diverse group of things. The community mm-hmm. as a whole is pretty sick of dancing. Like mm-hmm. they don't, they, they, every time we hit an influencer about a dance trend, they're like, bro, please, like, please leave me alone about this. Like, <laughs> so I think it's a lot of these managers and people in the industry who are coming into 2020, 2022 TikTok with 2019 aspirations. You know what I'm saying? Oh, nice. I'm just going to be able to pay 50 influencers and it's going to spark everything off. Or I'm just going to be able to like get my artists to do a cool little dance trend or something that's going to spark stuff off. And it's like, no, the platform is one much smarter than people are. I, I think fans are, are able to pick up pretty quickly on when they're being marketed to. You can kind of feel mm-hmm. the signs out, you know what I'm saying? Like we did with the Eam Trillion post, bro. It's like, you know enough, you can start like, mm, yep. this, this feels like some other shit that was being marketed to me, you know what I'm saying, that, that one time. <laughs> so it's like the, the the fans are smarter, the platform is matured, and the strategies that work then don't work now. Right, right. Like nine times out of 10, they're not gonna work. And so I can understand why they would say it, it is much harder to break an artist on TikTok in that in that regard. You know what I'm saying? And but that's what comes with every platform. There's no every platform time. that gets easier as it builds. You know what I'm saying? Like, like bro, one of my biggest regrets is not doing YouTube in 2004, bro. I, I wish I had. <laughs> bro, what? You know what I'm saying? Like bro, being early to YouTube and just staying with it. We're crazy. Man, <laughs> man. I know there's people that got big. Like I saw them be big, but. They kind of like felt like it was the ceiling at the time. Yeah, they didn't realize that it was still place to grow and go. So yeah, no, no the platform thing is 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 definitely huge. One thing I feel like our right, managers got to realize, and not just managers, but they mentioned managers. I, I've been asking this. Like people got to realize, 
when you get something popping on TikTok, it's still no other place that you can get something popping from zero to millions of streams so quickly, so cheaply on a consistent basis, yeah. right? We've seen this happen time and time again. We've done it as an agency time and time again. The difference is, right, when TikTok was super new, super novel, you might have seen some stuff pop and go like to hundreds of millions and billions of streams more often. Maybe that was happening more often. I'm not even fully like of that idea what i think is there's also way more artists in the game so it's just a, a more legitimate percentage that's reflected right um but if you get to millions of streams for basically nothing because the, the price of tiktok is not the price of these other platforms in most cases it's just up to you to keep the thing popping like all right your shit got to 10 million streams nobody's gonna like feel sorry for you because you got 10 million streams and it stopped there now you got enough attention to flip to Instagram. Yeah. All right. Now you got a t t enough attention to flip to radio if you have, you know, those relationships. Begin breaking the artists. We had the convo about Ice Spice, right? Yeah, Remember, yeah. Br breaking marketing a song is not breaking a song. Breaking a song is not breaking an artist, right? Yeah. So there's more leg to that race, right? I always say if Lil Nas X never made the connection with the labels, right? to do the rest of, of you know, the marketing and, and, and provide the rest of the resources to continue Old Town Road yeah. and take it to his max, he could have just been another internet hit artist, yeah. right? Yeah. Had a nice little viral moment, kept pushing. He was pushing. getting close. He, he, was, getting, getting close, he was getting close, right? Getting close, yeah. Those <laughs> windows are small. And, you know, I don't know the back end details of it, like whether it's him smartly understanding the importance of it and relevance of it, to his team, however, all right, because that's, uh, you know, that was ran so beautifully, but it literally was the difference between being, I think at that time, it was like the most streamed song of all time. It broke some kind of record. It broke a lot of records. Yeah. Uh, it broke a lot of records. Yeah. So literally of all time record breaking type stuff to literally just eh, another hit on a radio, uh, on a ra not a radio, on TikTok and, and the rest of internet. That was the difference, right? So you have to realize you have that window when your stuff pops off yeah. and you need to move quick. And I always, especially new artists, right? Like new artists fail to value the moment, right? Because they don't know that this moment is fleeting. Mm -hmm. You worked your ass off and finally after two years of like grinding it out, I got a song that's just taking it off. I'm not even doing anything. Yeah. I go to sleep, I wake up, my phone's moving faster. I eat some lunch, I wake up, I got some more followers, I got some more streams, I got some more views. And then they finally take a, they take a step back like, man, some of them, Honestly, right, which is something y'all got to work on, like that mental work. I, I know uh, I've talked to many artists. They'll be like, man, I'm almost scared of it. Yeah. Like I, so yeah. much activity. Yeah. I just get off of TikTok. Or I just get off of Instagram. I don't do anything yeah. because like yeah. you get paralyzed. So that's a whole nother conversation that needs to be had. But this moment will not last. You got to capitalize. You can't have no paralysis analysis. You can't just not do anything. Get afraid of negative comments. You, you can't just you know, rest on your laurels thinking it's going to apply to the next song, but that's what everybody does. And it sounds like some managers, they don't quite understand, like, TikTok is what it is. It's up to you to take it to that next level. Like, you never stop working a hit, all right, to that moment. It's gone, gone. Dollars, yeah. All right? It's gone, yeah. gone. So, so I don't know, man. It's so many things about it. Like, with, with it bothers me. Every time somebody attacks a platform, I guess, right? It's just like, come yeah. on, bro, like, the platform, it's a, it, you know, it's it's a gun, right? Yeah. Depends on who has the gun in their hand. You yeah. know what I mean? Gun yeah. ain't good. Gun ain't evil. You know <laughs> what I mean? And shoot, I can look, I can shoot you. Some person will think I'm good. Some person will think I'm evil. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, like all of that is relative. It's just like get go and get whatever you want to. So, yeah. like, um, I think it was some another interesting thing, uh, buddy brought up in that conversation was. TikTok over time, right? He was asking if, if we thought artist generated content has become more effective over time. Oh yeah. Has influencers become um, campaigns effective. become less effective? Because yeah. we had a stat that basically like two thirds of content, like hits that they got sparked off or from organic content, artist generated content, right? Yeah. And you know, my whole analysis was look, influencer campaigns are great. If you look, if you look at the the data, right? It was artist generated content, 
we had you user generated content second yep. and influencer campaigns and ads were last. Yeah. And when you just think about it, all three, those top artists, influencer and user are all content. Yeah. Period. And it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Content works. The only difference between your shit, your artist generated content and influencer content is you get unlimited at bats because you got control of this yeah. right you can keep posting and posting and posting influencers you run out of budget you have no more influencer campaigns so it makes sense when you got more chances and you're not spending money for most of the things to pop off be that yeah. right because then you have managers and astute marketers like us that are like yo let's try to actually make it pop off of artist generated content first and before we pay for it influencers mm -hmm. and then you know the user generated content it happens. Hey, bro, it just is what it, it is. Happens, you yeah. know what I mean? You like whatever God does, God does. You know that's that, that's the luck. I don't even want to say luck of the draw. That's just you know luck. If it happens, it happens. So, um, like the stats make a lot of sense. And in, influencer and user generated content have not become less impactful. It's just people becoming a lot smarter and understanding the impact of artist generated content. So if you ain't creating TikTok content, I know you heard this before, but yo. It's an L. Yeah, they like him, bro. And I think, too, like, people understand how to more effectively market their music on TikTok. Because if you, I mean, I think even, like, you know, us in 2019, somebody had been like, yo, how do I promote this song? And we've probably been like, mm, you know, yeah. we don't completely understand it yet. But now there are so many examples of artists who've used the platform correctly, um, both in the past and even currently, that, it, it, I don't know, it just, it makes sense. Like even looking at the line where like artist generated content is the first thing, makes sense. People like to see and hear things from the artist first, right? We like to feel like we're getting that personal yep. connection with them. User generated, generated content, these are the fans of the artist that he got from making the post, right? Influencers, it's like, okay, now he got some, some budget. He found, the, he found the bag somewhere. As, like you don't feel like doing none of that work no more. You just want a little traffic push in the background <laughs> while you go do some other shit. Right. And so, I don't know, it's like, I, that, I guess it makes sense to me because we we see that line happen so many times, right? We see it go from artist to fan, to then we guys with influencers and then guys with ads, and then just rinse and repeat that whole process. That it, it felt like a little bit of like a dub moment. Um, and even though, I think the point I made to him was that they're not less effective, it just makes sense to do them at a different point in the artist campaign. Where exactly. like 2020, 2019, 2020, we were going influencers first, right? So, oh shit, you got a bag, let's just pay as many influencers as possible, let's gas it, let's find a trend. Yep. Probably was around late 2020 when we started noticing like, man, this trend shit is kind of dying off. Uh, we ain't had a viral trend in, in, in months, you know what I'm saying? Um, also remember it was just way more expensive too. Yeah, way more nowhere. expensive, yeah, yeah. yeah. More, more influencers started learning their worth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Becoming more high vibrational creatures, you know what I'm saying? Picking up the information, <laughs> yeah. probably from people like us. I think about it all the time, bro. Like, damn, man, we probably shot ourselves yeah, in the yeah, foot, bro. You know, yeah, but man. but they they got the information from wherever they got it from. Yeah, yeah. Know your value. Know your value. I mean, and, and yeah. it was actually I think when we started to see it was, well, I don't I don't know maybe when you saw it, but I know when it clicked for me was the um, the Nick D campaign was when it, it first kind of hit for me. Which part? Um the artist generated content stuff because we had like 24k golden he was nah on. bro how did it not click to nick d bro because nick d's fine apple was the first one where i could see it from ground zero up because when he came to us it wasn't going it wasn't like going crazy was it but fast was a, a year before that oh you're right that's true i forgot right. about fast my bad fast <laughs> <laughs> a year before that bro and he, he had zero all, he only had content so i to me it was cleared in it was just i think it was tiktok was still so early and influencers and trends were still working well actually and that's I, what people still wanted so yeah. it was no point of really trying to push them to that that's like my, kind of where my energy was yeah that's what i was about to say i take it back i do know why nick d was the first time i saw it because it was the first campaign we had where we try all all of them at the same time and we could really clearly see like what yeah. was driving what was driving what right got you like we saw the portion of that was influencer focus i think we had just got access to ads at the time like he might have been the first no taj was the first ad client so he had to be like the second ad client we ever had for tiktok right so we're learning there and then his shit's the one going it's like damn his shit is going crazy by itself but when we add these other elements to it shit sparked and really went crazy so it's like we yeah. could keep trying to flip the chart and go 
influencers as and then convince the artists to make content but it's like when that shit is inverted and they can figure the content stuff out first like the rest of that shit is easy you know what i'm saying well i won't say easy but it's it's much easier than when nothing is happening so that's that's why i said that was when it clicked for me because i could i could look at all three parts of it working together and be like oh no this is clearly the thing that's driving majority of the people the content and so like but i know that was the point when i mean i always tell like other people about this but uh, you know we had that point uh, that same year where we just like looked at all of our most successful campaigns mm-hmm. and was like, damn, like what's the same thing? We got we got these 10 artists this year that popped off to varying degrees. What's What do they all have in common? And the one thing that they all had in common was they all were pretty good to really good content creators. Yep. Um, some of them were decent, which we argue like, we don't even need you to be amazing. We just need you to at least be decent. It was at least be okay, bro. Like, yep. But most of the really good ones were like, really good to amazing content creators to the point to where when they handed us shit it almost felt like it was too easy you know what i'm saying they'd be like damn we just gotta set up some ads and hit some info like, this is this is you know, he did most of the work bro he yeah. made this shit entertaining and, and all that stuff <laughs> so i don't know man i, I feel like the, the the point we keep making the artists is bro if you got the money do all of it mm-hmm. right like still do all of it if you don't have the money, you definitely should be doing Wait, the content. This is why that's important though, because it goes back to newer artists not quite understanding the how high something can go. Right. Yeah. You have that moment again. Oh, I've never had three million streams in thirty days or yeah. sixty days before. So I'm like, yo, I don't need anything else. Right. Yeah. Cause I it popped all off of organic. Or maybe it popped off of influencers. Not respecting and understanding where the other aspects lie right so it's like yeah ads might not be as impactful for creating the spark like artists and generated content but it doesn't mean ads can't add value to this campaign yeah it doesn't mean igpr can't add value to this it doesn't mean that influencers can't add value to it it's just used strategically in a different way yeah but so many artists it's funny because you know we've, we've had so many different clients that will move in different ways and they found success in different ways and they'll only swear by that way yeah next thing yeah. you know nothing else works yeah. oh man you know all i need to do is post content ads don't work then you had an artist that popped off with ads and that's all he sees yeah. right yeah. and then you got the artist that had an influencer campaign or artists that never spent money at all a day in their life because they're but you got a manager that's a hustler and, and they flip some things they're creative and everybody just falls into their dogmatic mentality yeah. and tries to preach that nothing else works while we're kind of in the center and like seeing no all these things work yeah it's just when you do them who you doing for what song like it's it's an entire machine so um, like to Corey's point, man, like if something is popping, like one, it doesn't mean anything else doesn't work. But two, like your song can go farther if you do more. It's the same reason why people will work a song. They'll say radio isn't really responsible for creating hits these days. Yeah. Yet when songs get really popping on the Internet, what do they do? They take it to the radio. Yeah. Right. Because radio still does have value. You just need to know when to apply the value. Yeah. Like that's that's my point with that. Yeah, all of it really. Yeah. Like we talk about the whole like marketing mix, mix, yeah, ecosystem. Like, oh, this doesn't make sense to do now. This makes sense to do at these points. And it's like the ide- in the ideal world, everybody would do all of it. You know. Yeah. I think in the more realistic world, you kind of find the combination of things that work for you, and then you you get that so tight knit that you feel comfortable enough to experiment. Right. Because exactly. you're like, okay, even this fucks up, I at least got this thing, this system over here working for me. Right. Like, I just feel like yeah, like too many people write it off. It's just like, I don't know. I guess writing off is like, I, I, I think it's the work aspect of it. I always go about that, bro. It's like, if I tell you to go make a post, that shit you gotta do. If you tell me you wanna run some ads, that shit we gotta do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I, I really do feel like that's what it boils down to. Cause there's yeah. no way everybody's seeing these same people on TikTok pop off, seeing it the same way. Now we got the report out, so we can definitely be like, ain't no way you ain't you ain't know this shit now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But there's no way that we all for the last like year and a half, two years of the industry have been looking at this shit happen and nobody else is coming to the same conclusion <laughs> that we're coming to. But that's, <laughs> I refuse to believe that. We might have been the first right. ones to put it, put numbers on it, right? but there's no way we were the first ones to start thinking about it. So I, I have to boil it down to everybody's like, damn, that's how this shit works. Well, I don't really want to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm gonna go do this other thing. I hope that works out. And it's like that is at best stupid, 
at worst, really fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, that's a fact. You already know I'm on your side with that one. 